Okay, this is going to be a live power up only, and I mean power up, apply voltage to it. This uh, Mohawk 10 um, amp I recently picked up because it was fairly clean, it was local, I got it for a decent price. So uh, I picked it up. Mohawk 10, I like uh, two 572Bs, 6146B driver. But uh, I'll do videos on it later, especially if I get it completely going. But this is how I do a live power-up test. Um, when I initially got it, uh, you know, looked it over, went through it. I, you know, told you on the other video, uh, linear amplifier testing troubleshooting 101 or something like that, that, you know, one of the things I do is check the fuses. See if it has a fuse in it. See if it's overfused. See if somebody put uh, aluminum foil around the fuse. See if it's the correct fuse, etc., etc. And this one, the amp calls for a 15 amp fuse, and they had a 30 amp fuse in it. I was like, uh oh. Um, other than that, this high voltage um, power supply board here um, looked like a big giant kludge. They had eight of the um, power supply bank or filter caps all wired in on top and they used these kind of uh, radio caps so they had eight of, all eight of them up top and they had I would say literally 20 jumpers jumping around you know to to wire in those caps um, so it was caps everywhere jumpers everywhere that's a big kludge however I did try to test that kludge and it looked like it was actually hooked up right everything looked okay and like I said it had these newer caps in it just like these brown ones here um, and that's what it calls for 450 volt 100 uh, UF caps so I said okay you know everything you know looks alright test okay even though it looks like a clue so we put the proper fuse in and tighten down our screws check for loose wires stuff like that um, uh, tested diodes tested resistors everything looked okay so we did what we're doing now on our power up number one test and after we got the voltage on the variac about halfway up on test one we heard arcing and popping and 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 the transformer or the tranny uh, was not happy um, so with that we powered it down and we're like well we weren't gonna leave that uh, power supply board like that anyway so uh, we ordered these new caps that we put in. Um, these are 150 UF. So we went up in the rating. These are um, high temperature, uh, low ESR caps. So they should run a little bit better and smoother than the um, regular 100 UF 450s anyway. Um, so we cut all the uh, kludge out and wired in these caps. It's four on top and four underneath. Uh, so it's eight caps just like before, but it's you know not a it's not the best looking ever, but it's not a kludge anymore, right? Um, check the bleeders, everything looked good. So we're gonna do another power up test. Now remember, it failed the first one, uh, went to arcing and all that. And if you can see, this red wire is disconnected. That's on purpose. That's the high voltage out of this uh, power supply board that goes over to the tubes. We disconnected that because um, we're kind of doing it one step at a time. We're actually two steps. Because, uh, you know, when you have a problem with it, I say, you know, first thing it might be is the tubes. If you uh, disconnect the tubes, you got a problem, it's probably the power supply board. You disconnect that and have a problem, probably the power transformer. Even though this transformer has uh, quite a few voltages going out, it's got the uh, high voltage uh, 4 to 5 72 B's about uh, 2800 3 kilovolts uh, dangerous so keep that in mind don't kill yourself it also has uh, about a thousand volts DC on a 6146 driver tube that's over here that's the socket for that and it uses a negative hundred volts of bias somewhere around there and it uses that to run the uh, bias uh, which is regulated and they use negative voltage for the uh, transistorized key in circuit 
which is all that stuff there. Um, so you can see all these wires on the transformer there. It has a lot of wires, so it might not necessarily be the high voltage, but uh, when it comes to amplifier, it usually is the high voltage, but not all the time. So uh, again, what I do is, you know, um, what I do here, I got the Variac. It's all hooked up. Uh, got the Variac on and dialed down. Um, we got this meter. Oh, it went off on me. Hooked to the high voltage probe here. So this high voltage probe um, is connected to the high voltage out DC right there. And then it's grounded uh, somewhere. Let me make sure my ground's good. There's the ground wire right there. Then this clip here is an extra ground, you know, a safety ground to make sure I'm good there. We're going to fire it up, but we got the high voltage connected. So we should read high voltage divided by a thousand there. We got the tube disconnected one thing at a time. Got the Variac dial down and also we got the Variac plugged into a, um, the Variac's plugged into the watt meter here. So this will read the watts that the amp and the Variac is pulling. Um, I used to have this connected to the um, amp directly and then this plugged into the Variac but this thing wouldn't power up until it hits around 40 50 volts and I wanted to see my watts before it did that so I moved this and now I plug the Variac right into this even though it's going to read what the Variac is pulling and what the amp is pulling um, the Variac is just going to pull a little bit more so my watts are going to be a little bit higher but since there's no draw with the tubes not hooked up and all that, it should not pull a whole lot of watts. You know, it's going to pull some for the filament and some for the fan and, and some because of loss, you know, in the transformer and all that. But it shouldn't pull a ton of watts. So we look at all that, got it hooked up, and this is actually how I um, power test an amplifier like this, right? So I guess that's enough talking. We're going to start dialing it up. Let's see if I can hold the camera in one hand. Let's look at the uh, voltage there. And we're going to start dialing. And remember, these volts here, DC volts, are times a thousand. So 0 0.2 times a thousand is actually uh, 200 volts, etc. That's 300 volts. We're dialing up the Variac. That's about 25 volts on the Variac about 600 volts DC here and also we looking at my watts 11 watts is good not a whole lot of watts they are being pulled so real real good you know everything's looking good so we're gonna dial up the Variac a little bit more keeping an eye on everything we're gonna dial it up to 50 on the uh, Variac so we're at 50. We're almost halfway to the 110, 120. 1.1 volts times a thousand. That's 1,100 volts. 50 on the Variac. 29 watts. Not a whole lot of watts. If this thing had a short in it, it would show it by now. I'd be pulling, um, you know, two, three, five hundred watts if it had a short at this point. And over here we got the voltmeter, the internal voltmeter on the uh, Mohawk. Um, and it's reading about 600. Looks like about 500. Can't see the scale that well. But that's going. Fans starting to go. Everything looking good. No sparks, no arcs, no pow. So we're going to slowly dial it up a little bit more. Volt still going up. Trying to get the glare out the way. No arcs, no part, no no farts. <laughs> All right, now we have to 75 volts. 1.6 kilovolts. Fan starting to run at 75. 55 watts, which is hardly anything. Remember the filaments are you know going, the fans going. So it's going to pull a little bit of watts in the transformer losses. Is going to be some watts too, right? And the Variac is in line, so that's good. Everything good. 55 watts, no pops, no arcs, no kapows. 
don't have to cancel Christmas yet so we're gonna dial it up to a hundred slowly capacitors like it when you dial up the voltage anyway that's basically what a soft start or a slow start is it's just it puts lower voltage on the capacitors until they get a little bit of charge and then it uh, applies full power so we're up to 100 volts on the Variac 2.6 kilovolts DC 100 volts on the Variac we're pulling 125 watts that's not a lot I think the uh, two filaments alone are probably running 40-50 um, watts for the 572B's look good on the uh, internal voltmeter no arcs, no kapow. And we're going to dial it up to the about 115. Right there on the very end. 180 watts sounds about right. Not a lot. 180 watts is only like 1.3 or so amps. Not a lot. 3.1 kilovolts. That's no load. If we had the tubes on it, it might pull it down a little bit. So, no farts, no arcs. Here's the voltmeter. Watts are good. Seems to be holding up. And that is how I power test an amplifier. Now, next, after we power it down, make sure it's completely drained safely and all that. You know, unplugged for safety we will plug in the tubes and then we'll go through this cycle again and if it uh, starts acting up after we plug in the tubes we know something out past the high voltage board is bad either the tubes maybe the blocking capacitor or short in the plate choke but it's something on the other side the output of that high voltage wire but normally it's the tubes if it starts acting up once I put that high voltage on the tubes. Alright, that's it for this one. More to come, you know, especially once I get it going, we'll do a uh, better video on this. Bye.